Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Claudia Monicelli with another episode of Multiple Voices. My Multiple Voices podcast, true to its name, includes different series. For example, we have the Voices of Love, where we discuss relationships, the voice of empowerment, the voice of laughter and play, the voice of pleasure, and the magical voice of archetypes and how they change the way we live. But we also have the voice of memory that includes everything from history to discussions of past life regression. There's also writing voices where we interview both seasoned writers and authors who have just started getting their feet wet with writing and we learn what can work for you as potential writers. Our series called Voice of the Spirit discusses different forms of spirituality and religion. And then Channeling Voices is a series that covers what happens when you channel, but is also extended to mediumship. Take a moment to review this podcast if you've enjoyed listening, and leave a hearty five stars. I'd appreciate it. Enjoy your listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Claudia Manicelli with another episode of my podcast, uh, Multiple Voices. Today I'm with a writer. Betsy Kulakowski, Kulakowski, sorry about that. Say hello to the the audience, Betsy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me it, today. Great. It's a wonderful, op, you know, opportunity to have you. And Betsy is speaking to us from Oklahoma City in Oklahoma. And uh, what I know about her is that what drives her is a good story. She loves a good story. And when, when both she reads it, but when she can create it, um, you know, there are a, there's a lot to be said about writing. And she is a, uh, a fiction writer. And her, let's say her genre, am I right in saying that it's paranormal thrillers? Yes, absolutely. That's correct. Okay. Well, let let me see if I can get you to talk to us about that. Now, um, of course, there are a lot of things. There's how to build characters, a word world building. How do you build the context? Uh, what exactly is a paranormal thriller? I think it would be best to lead with that, but also we'll sure. draw on... Um, real life and the way you started publishing. So let's start talking about the genre, paranormal thrillers. What makes a book a paranormal thriller? Well, that was a question I had to ask myself when I was writing it because I really didn't know what genre I was writing in. I figured it was science fiction because I use a lot of science. I use a lot of fiction. It wasn't until I met my publisher and we really kind of started digging down into what I was really writing that it came up that, you know, I have an element of paranormal in my books because we deal with the hunt for Bigfoot. We deal with aliens. We deal with ancient mysteries, time travel. Um, So that was the paranormal side. Mine is very much an action driven story. It's a thriller, just like any other thriller movie you would see, but we're also dealing with the paranormal and that effect on the world that we're in. Okay, so what world are we building? Let's let's talk about your work. How did you build yeah. your work? So my my first story that I, I started in this series, I actually started writing it in two thousand and nine. Wait, um, Betsy, I'm, we're jumping the gun. Let's talk oh, about sorry. because you already mentioned your publisher. Let's talk yeah. about the road uh, that you went down for publishing and how did that work for sure. you? Let's start by answering the question. How long have you been writing? When did it start? Well, for me, I have always loved stories. So my first book I wrote at the age of six. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't remember what it was about, but I remember putting it together with the cardboard binding and the strings and, you know, just like any typical child's book. And I I just, I love books so much and I just never had enough of them. So I wrote my first one at six. Um, And then I I started writing again as a teenager um, and then, continued on just figuring everything was for practice. So my, my first book, I really wrote it for practice and I never thought anybody would ever read it. When was that? So I can make it. When was that? That was in 2009. Okay. That was the, uh, what became the Veritas Codex, which is my first published book. Veritas, Veritas Codex. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So that was my, my first dive into a paranormal thriller. 
Uh, and I could be a, as outlandish as I wanted it to be because I knew nobody would ever read it. It was just for practice. And it was really just for me to see what I could do. Right. Um, so that was my first real dive into it. And that went really well. So I thought, well, let's write a sequel. Wait a minute. You're, you're jumping the gun again. What do you mean it went very well? Where did it go? <laughs> well, it sat in a folder and didn't anything didn't happen with it. But I couldn't let those characters go. I loved them so much that I wanted to know what happened next. So I wrote the next one. And then I wrote the next one. And, and then I wrote the next but one. But did they get published? They didn't have a path. No, because I I wrote them for practice, and I didn't ah! expect anybody would ever read them. So, how many so, books did you write for practice? Um, I have a lot. I'll just say a lot before the, the series, first I had got published. Yes, I had those four written. I started going to writers' conferences probably about five or six years ago, uh -huh. and I met um, some really amazing people that really encouraged me and said, "You know what." If you've enjoyed it so much, surely somebody else will like it too. Let, let somebody else read it. So I started finding other people to read it and I was getting great feedback. Um, and at the 2019 Writers Conference, I had written in my notes, you know, in the next year, I'm going to do one thing that's going to get me invited to come and speak at next year's conference. Wait, 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 you're that. jumping the gun, Betsy. Again. I know. All right. It's all part of the cycle. <laughs> wait a second. We're in 2009 and that's when you yes. started writing. Okay. You wrote four books and you talk about writers' conferences. Now, how many did you go to until you got someone who said, wow, this has to be published? When somebody bit, you know, when somebody took you up on what you were doing. That, that was in 2019. All right. So that was the first writers' conference or the only? No, that was probably my fourth or fifth. Okay, fourth or fifth. Well, let's take a look at what the first one was like. What did the first right. Writers' Conference give you? It gave me a lot of fear, but it also gave me a lot of courage. And uh, I really do you mean? believe that the only what thing do you mean? standing in my way, well, you know, since I wrote it for practice and I could make it outlandish and be as crazy as I wanted it to be, I was really afraid what people would think about me as a writer mm -hmm. and about the story because, you know, the hunt for Bigfoot is not, you know, mainstream every day. You know, I didn't want people to think I was crazy, <laughs> honestly. But we're talking about paranormal here, right? <laughs> right, right. So who um, was doing the hunting? Uh, it's a television crew that does a travel adventure show. Okay. And that was, that's their, that's their genre is they go out and they, they actually do these investigations. And my, my main character is very scientific. Um, she's give a us a, biological... give a name, give it, give it, give us a name. Yeah. Dr. Lauren Grayson is okay. a biological anthropologist. Okay. She has a PhD mm -hmm. and uh, she is, she, she fights the same fights that I was fighting as a writer to be taken seriously in a field that didn't get a lot of respect. Oh, all right. Now, wait. I'm getting the message because, uh, let's say, not all books are autobiographical, fine. Not, they're not all mm -hmm. memoirs. But here, there is a projection of some sorts, right? Um, Very much so. Much of what we dream about and project in a fantastic way, using the word fantastic in its literal meaning. Um, so the first one, you said the first writing conference gave you a lot of fear and a lot of what was the other word you used courage courage now why the fear you told us that it you didn't mm -hmm. know how it would be yes. taken and the courage I didn't how? know how yeah and courage was it was like there are other people like me who are still fighting this fight and there are people out there who can help us sometimes the only thing we have to do is get past ourselves and for me, that's that's the, that was the first step was to see that there's other people like me. Yeah. And there are people who like what I do. Yeah. And there are people that can help me get past me. So that means in the first conference, you saw that uh, you, you had feedback from literary agents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this I is did. what they, they gave you, positive, negative, and uh, you came away with the notion that, yes, I'm going to go on. So that was the first. Yes. We're at the second. Yes. Was that at an interval of a year or six months? Or yes. How long? Right about a year. A year yeah, you did another year. one. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. And uh, I started to learn the business 
of writing a book because I knew I knew some techniques. I knew I knew what worked and what didn't for me, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know anything about the business of writing a book. I didn't know about marketing. I didn't know about pitching. I didn't know about, you know, trying to sell it to an agent or sell it to a publishing company. And so it's like every year I picked up another tidbit of information that I just kind of filed in my little notebook Mm -hmm. and thought, okay, when I'm ready for it, there it is. I'll know what to do. Okay. So what was the second writer's conference like? Uh, it was, I was more comfortable yeah. because I knew some of the people there. I had met quite a few people the previous year, had made connections through social media. Was it the same and, conference? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I knew everybody there and that was very helpful because I kind of got out of my shell a little bit, mm-hmm. a little bit more than I had the year before. Right. And I met even more people. I actually pitched a manuscript mm-hmm. uh, to a couple of agents. None of them took, but it was good practice for me. Okay. So now this is uh, year two. Mm-hmm. Did you wait a whole year and you went back to the same conference? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was still writing in the background. Yeah. Uh, still working a full-time job, but writing in the background. Uh, and by then I was starting to think about the next book mm-hmm. or another book or a different series or a different genre. Mm-hmm. And I, I write all the time. So it was just one of those things that I still had these little nuggets in my in my file yeah. that I'll come back to. Yeah. I've got some other things I'm working on. Um, and it was just, you know, learning to get past myself and learning the business and learning where to go next. So let's say building blocks. Every year you had a few exactly. more building blocks. Now that was year three. Yes. What did you come away with in year three? Um, year three, I walked away feeling, I think I was a little sad after year three because I didn't really feel like I was progressing, ah. but I was still learning. Okay. And I think that was that I, once I, once I connected with that and once I realized that, then it was okay. I see. I see. All right. So now we're in year four, same conference, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go. What yes. happens in year that four? Was, that was the year that I made the commitment that I was going to do something in the next year. All right. And I was going to be asked to come back and speak at that conference. Um, I didn't know what that was, but I did pitch a manuscript that was a piece of women's fiction to an agent, and she was really interested in it. And she asked for the full manuscript. When you say a, a, a work of women's fiction mm-hmm. that had nothing yes. to do with the paranormal thriller. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, so it us, was all about, yeah. yeah, it was all about a woman who was trying to overcome her own obstacles and and succeed in her own journey. A mm-hmm. uh, little bit of romance, a little bit of, um, you know, the real world. Uh, I, I, I really couldn't call it a romance novel because the romance wasn't the main part of the story. It was her overcoming an obstacle that was laid out for her that was seemingly, un, uh, you know, something that not a normal person could overcome. And she was able to do it. Okay, so that was different from the first uh, mm-hmm. book that you wrote, the something codex, Veritas, the Veritas codex. codex. Yeah. Um, and your protagonist, uh, who was Doctor, what's her name? Lauren Grayson. Lauren Grayson, but she made a comeback, didn't she? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she did. All right. So now we have yeah. this uh, fiction, this woman's fiction mm-hmm. book, and it right. was taken on by an agent. Uh, she actually ended up passing on it, but it was the first time I had ever gotten a request for a full manuscript. So that was a ah, huge milestone. I see. And I recognized that. Okay. Um, what happened next was really interesting. They had announced that they were going to be doing a writer's cruise, which was going to be a week long intensive workshop at sea. Okay. So you've done the four years and the right. same organization organized this cruise. Oh, yes. Ooh. Yes. Ah. <laughs> and so I talked to my husband about it and I said, you know what, if I'm serious about continuing in this journey, I think this is where I need to go. And so we sent in a manuscript that we were going to workshop, go through, you know, kind of find some of its flaws, put together a marketing plan, practice our pitch. And so that was the Veritas Codex was the one I sent in because that was the book that scared me the most. <laughs> it scared you the most because there were, in, in your mind at the time, outlandish events that not everyone yes. was used to. Correct. So uh, let's say that cruise was very profitable for you. 
Yes, it was because within a couple of weeks after the cruise, I had a request for a contract, not just for the one book, but for the whole series. Ah, so it was worth your while all was. those years. So mm-hmm. now what does a com- contract look for for a series? You already knew that mm-hmm. how many books would have been in the series then or no? At the time, I had five that were written for the series. Yeah. And I had some ideas for a couple of more. Uh, Currently, there are 11 Uh with the main story arc going for possibly 12. And then we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so that means that that contract covers all of those books. Yes. Oh, now, you must have been so happy for that. I was ecstatic. I felt like I'd won the lottery. Yeah, right. And so let's say the contract, did it cover all of the marketing as well? A lot of the marketing I still do myself. I, I you know, give us an a, idea a, of what you do. It's a relationship you build with that publisher, and mm-hmm. it's it's a small local press. Um, so there's give and take on both sides. Initially, it was for three books. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've renewed the contract for another four, uh, and then there's always the possibility of re- renewing it on and on until infinity. Yeah, right. <laughs> because we love it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do a lot of, you know, I do a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. and I do a lot of social media. I do all that myself. Uh, there are some things that my publisher does. Um, I have audiobooks included in my contract. I have eBooks and I have print books. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are all, uh, something that we work together towards to make sure that they are successful mm-hmm. and You know, I do my part, they do their part, and we work together. It's a great partnership. So I'm going to ask you a difficult question now, because I um, interview a lot of authors. And, um, for example, one of the women who had worked in traditional, uh, in the traditional publishing route um, world, went on then to create her... Um, precision house publishing saying, you know, there's nothing random about this, you know, so it's her brand, her name, she publishes her work and anything she does with anyone else. Or there's a hybrid publishing, there's also so many things. Would you, at, you know, in light of your experience with mm-hmm. a contract, would you consider going a different route? in the future? That's always a possibility Mm -hmm. um, because I have other manuscripts that are still sitting in the wings that are completely unrelated to the book series that I have. Mm -hmm. Uh, At some point I would like to go back and revisit some of those and some of those I may self publish and some of those I may pitch to an agent Mm -hmm. and go with a big publishing house. Um, Just, I never know. Yeah. Okay. So there you're open to different possibilities I am. yeah yes. so let's go down to dr dr what's her name lauren grayson <laughs> lauren grayson let's get to see yes. this this fabulous phd doctor um mm-hmm. so she's an anthropologist a biological mm-hmm. anthropologist? biological anthropologist okay mm-hmm. now um and she is she the protagonist for all of your books in that series she, yes she's my main character mm-hmm. and so she leads the team uh, she has uh, a number of, t- of the team that works with her. We have the director of photography. We have a research assistant. We have the field producer mm-hmm. uh, that go out on these adventures with her. Um, so she, she's not alone. She's always got her partners and her teammates with her. Okay. So let's say we're, all right, we're building the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you right. mean by world building? So she exists in the real world, in my real world. Mm -hmm. She, you know, she lives uh, in California and they travel all over the world. Um, But there's also a a supernatural element in the universe that she lives in that I try to weave in so that it's very subtle. There are forces that come into play, powers that she gains as we go, and those powers continue to grow. And we see those throughout the journey of her life. Does she come into powers? Yes, oh, she does. How, at what book? What? Which book? Uh, it actually starts in the first book. Ah. And would, yes. do you want to give us a sneak peek into the power, the type of power she possesses? Sure. She obtains the ability to understand every language on earth. Ah, that's 
<laughs> That's a tall order. <laughs> it is. And it begins with her. She's a Native American, so it begins with her own tribe. Yeah. Uh, she speaks. She doesn't initially, but she learns just magically to speak Cherokee. Okay. Which I actually took a college course in oh. Cherokee and, uh, a long time ago, and it's really had to practice to stay up with it. And that came in handy. <laughs> it did. Well, that's an interesting um, superpower, let's say. Yes. So it's really not a, I wouldn't consider that as a paranormal power. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. You know, if I, if you said to me, well, she's able to read people's minds, I would say that's paranormal. Yes. But if she has, yes. because usually we think of uh, languages as mm -hmm. being learned, right? Yes. And it's not something that she just learns. It's just she knows. Yeah. Okay. She sees it and she understands it. Yeah. Okay. I get that. She's becoming more and more interesting. Now, I mean, is there a lover in the picture? There is. Her partner, her field producer, uh, is they're having a secret relationship. She really doesn't want anyone to know that they're dating because she feels like that could affect their credibility. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the end, she realizes it's really not the case. Ah. Uh, oh. Does it ever come out? Oh, yes. Oh, which book? <laughs> In the first book. Oh, oh. Yes, yes. And we build on that from there on. Okay. Does it weave into and out of their work? Does it, is it sort of visible, invisible to the public at times? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, initially, initially, it's not really something that comes to the surface, but before the, the before the book is over, uh, there's no need to hide it because everybody really kind of already have figured it out. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I get it. Um, let's say that um, when you say that you draw on real life, um, is that, does that relate to say, for example, Bigfoot and the phenomenon mm -hmm. of Bigfoot in the minds of people today? Yes. I do a lot of research on, previous investigations, findings, theories. Um, you know, I try to talk to experts when I can. Uh, I do a lot of, I read a lot of books. I watch a lot of documentaries. So I always try to make sure that that I focus on the science because that's what Lauren would want me to do because she's a scientist. <laughs> yeah. So I try to really focus on the science. And um, if I find an article about um, the second book, they, they're involved in the investigation on the Mayan apocalypse, which, you know, the logical person knows that the world is not going to end just because the calendar has run out. You know, you go and buy a new calendar. Yeah. Um, but I, I would do a lot of research into why do people think the world is going to end or why did the Maya um, write things the way they did? So I, I try to do as much fact-based as I can and then weave in these little elements of the, of the supernatural and the paranormal to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you, well, probably arguably the most important thing about writing is this, the idea of character development. And it's so, so particular. Can you give us, I mean, if you don't mind sharing, what are the steps that are necessary steps and details? How, how detailed yeah. is a person, person's character? I strive really hard to make sure that in the beginning, the character, they have something that they're really trying to achieve. Yeah. And there are some flaws in either their character or the world that they live in that they have to overcome uh -huh. to get what the goal is. Yeah. And sometimes they have to realize, you know, what's holding them back is either themselves or something that they thought was the truth. Yeah. And it turns out that it was actually not the truth at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it was their perception of what they thought the truth was. So okay. characters, I try to make them very complex. Yeah. Uh, I want them to be likable. Mm. Um, you have to have a character that fills a niche. Uh, so, you know, Lauren has her strengths and weaknesses, and I try to make sure that her the love interest, Rowan, uh, that they play off of those and that he fills in in the areas where she's weak. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, there's there's that give and take for every character in the book has a role to play mm -hmm. to help that main character achieve that goal. Well, how far is it necessary to go, for example, in order to give us an idea of what world uh, the biological anthropologist has come from? Do you have to go way back into her her family tree, her grandparents were they what is that how far does that go 
Um, actually, we do get into some of her family history. She has uh, a very uh, messy relationship with her mother mm-hmm. and her brother. Yeah. Um, her father left when she was very young. Yeah. And that has uh, colored her world. Uh, there's some perceptions there that she she blames herself for that, even though she was, you know, not even born when he left. Yeah. Um, so she has some some misconceptions about that. So we get into some really details. By the third book, we're actually going to meet her her troublesome brother mm-hmm. that has always threatened to find aliens before she is because he works for NASA. Ah, uh, okay. So, but let's say, um, let's go back. All right. Uh, the first book, the first book that you wrote right. in 2009, and you've probably revised numerous times in oh, some yes. parts. Yes. Um, how did you actually open chapter one? Uh, they are in a cave in uh, South America, mm-hmm. and they're looking down at what appears to be the body of an alien corpse. Okay. Uh, okay. And from there, you're able to construct her character and her partner's yes. character yes okay and they all it all comes forward from there uh they get into a conflict with the local officials because they want to take that body to investigate it and uh-huh. to research it to the lab yeah to study it and the government official will not let her and she is very hot-headed mm-hmm. and uh she makes a veiled threat that gets her in a lot of trouble <laughs> So let's say it, you just, you know, threw on the page this alien corpse. Do you have to go into the minute description of what it is about that corpse that is absolutely distinctive of an alien? Uh, I actually do go into some details on, on, you know, the theory of what it might be, what, what it could, you know, what a more logical... Um, rational explanation might be you know maybe it's a chicken maybe it's you know a a deformed being you know what's the real scientist scientific basis you know what could it be that's not that fantastical you know the team's automatically jumping to alien and she's like "Mm, i want to take samples i want to see it in the lab because you know i don't know we'll see yeah um, and you know as i hear you describe that um in my mind i'm i'm the reader right I think to myself, well, why are they just messing around? Why, why is it true? I mean, how co- are they sure it's an alien? Are are they convincing me that it's an alien? You know, right? Do you put yourself yourself in the reader's shoes in that case? I do my best to do that. Um, you know, they're in the process of producing a television show, so I try to look at it from the viewer standpoint, which is also the reader standpoint. So I'm always looking to see, you know, what detail is going to let that reader either come to their own conclusion or am I going to really hook them and say, come with me, let's go find out what it really is. Okay. When you say there, there's um, a TV um, show underway, is it based on one of your books? Uh, that That is the, the premise of the book is they are there to film a television show. Ah, okay, okay. So... I see. So let's say that you're using TV, uh, the the which is it is the quintessence of of uh, non reality as a reality to mm-hmm. convince the listener, the reader, yes. which is yes. a, a fantastic trope. I think that's a fantastic way mm-hmm. to do that. What? How did you come up with that? I watch a lot of travel adventure shows. I loved, I grew up watching, you know, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Uh It was a big show when I was a kid. Uh, There was a show called In Search Of that Leonard Nimoy was the host of. Yes, yes. And then I got into Nova and Nature on public television. Yeah. And any kind of a show like that, I'm, I'm usually there for, you know, there's a lot of things now out on the travel channel, the discovery channel, there's the ghost adventure shows. Um, There's a lot of, you know, wilderness survival shows and i try to take all of those and you know find the elements from them that i can can use to make my stories richer and weave them in Uh uh-huh do we find this doctor dreaming does in at any point in your that you can recall does she talk to her partner about her dreams or to her therapist or 
or someone. <laughs> we, do, we do see her get into some, some dream uh, analysis, some dream states. Uh, she's not always sure that what's happening to her is real mm -hmm. uh, because she can't explain it. And being a scientist, she has to be able to explain everything. Mm. Do, we, do we like her partner? Oh, yes. Okay, now, wait a minute. I hope so. Well, because, you know, it's always, um, mm -hmm. it, you're a woman, and there is the representation of this PhD uh, biological anthropologist, mm -hmm. and then there's the man, and they mm -hmm. always get the worst rap. I mean, <laughs> they're just yeah. there, you yes. know? But, yeah. but how do you deal with that? I try to make sure that Rowan completes her. Uh -huh. She's everything he need, or he's everything she needs him to be. Mm -hmm. He is retired military. He has a history of his own. He has a family of his own. You know, his mo mom and dad and sister. You know, we'll see them at some point in the books. Um, but when when she gets into trouble, he's always there for her. It's not always him saving her sometimes it's her saving him i see so it's not one of these traditional tropes where the girl has to be rescued by the man mm -hmm. i try to make it go both ways they balance each other out yeah fascinating um do you have in mind in the future because you said you had some of the books that weren't out there yet um mm -hmm. have you recently um i don't know had the desire to do something different from what you've written so far mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about what's next. Yeah. Uh, I have always enjoyed science fiction. So that's something that I'd like to delve into a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I've, of course, the women's fiction piece is still sitting in the background. I'd like to revisit that at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always got my, you know, what's, what's the next thing? I'm always looking for that next project. What's the next story, mm -hmm. the next character. So I have, I have a few things that I've started and I've had a few things that I've just made notes on that at some point I'll come back to. Uh, and when the time's right and I'm ready, I'll sit down and write those books. Before you briefly mentioned when you were talking about the Writers Conference mm -hmm. and uh, the cruise, you were saying, I set the intention that in the future I want to go back and talk uh, as, yes. as a guest. Well, did you get that opportunity? I did. <laughs> in the 2020 conference, I had my, my first book came out on September 1st and the conference was Labor Day weekend, which is that first weekend in September. So I had a brand new book in hand and was invited to come and speak at that writer's conference. And I've since spoken at several. Uh, I'm invited back this year for WriterCon oh, What did you talk about? Yes, I, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about the paranormal genre, uh, talking about lessons learned from the first year as a writer. Okay. I also have a degree in emergency management. So we mm. focus a lot on lessons learned. Yeah. And we do what's called an after action review after a major event. So I kind of did an after action review after my first year as a writer and all the things that I learned in that first year about how to be a good business partner, how to be a good publicist, how to be your own marketing staff. So it was a lot of fun for me to go and actually share the things that I had learned and to hopefully inspire somebody else who was sitting in there taking notes going, what am I going to do to get where I could do something like that? <laughs> well, um, you've said how to, how to do this, how to do that. Have you ever thought of writing a how-to book? I've thought about it. I'm not there yet. I still have lessons to learn of my own, and I realize that. Unfortunately, there are a lot of great writers who have already written those books on how-to that I try to I try to read those and, and learn as much as I can from them as well. Okay, so um, we have to ingrain in our audience the, the title of your um, series. It's The Vortex Co the no, the Veritas Codex. The, the Veritas Codex. The Veritas, yes, Veritas Codex. means truth, and Codex is Latin for book. So okay. it's basically the truth book. Okay, the Veritas, the Veritas, Codex. Veritas Codex. All right, Betsy Kulakowski. And you could find her on her website, www.authorbetsykulakowski.com. I'll write that in the description of the uh, episode. And she's also active on Instagram, and her handle is author Betsy K. And um, on Twitter, the handle is B K O O L I. What does that stand for? Uh, Bakuli. Uh, Bakuli's Betsy, the B for Betsy, and the K 
is or the Cooley is for Kulikowski. Ah! Uh, I actually borrowed that from my brother-in-law. His <laughs> handle was De Cooley. Uh, so K O O L I E is uh, kind of the family joke about our last ah, name. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for taking the time, Betsy, for coming on the show and opening our eyes to this uh, paranormal thriller genre and but you know being very candid about your own experience is never an easy journal a journey to to learn and grow and understand we're always learning good luck to you Absolutely. i'm going to read one of Thank those so books <laughs> yes i hope you enjoy it and uh, i really appreciate the opportunity to be on the show you're welcome bye bye betsy Bye. Thank you so much.